Picture a man living over 2,400 years ago in the 5th century BCE amidst the Israelites. This man known as Malachi was not just any ordinary man but a prophet of significant importance. His name translating to my messenger in Hebrew is a clear indication of the role he played in his lifetime. Malachi was a conduit, a messenger, tasked with the divine responsibility of delivering God's messages to the people of Israel. He stood as a beacon shedding light on the path the Israelites were to follow and warning them of the consequences of straying from it. His words were not his own, but those of a higher power intended to guide, correct, and inspire. The messages delivered by Malachi have been immortalized in the book of Malachi, the final book of the Old Testament in most Christian canons. This book serves as a testament to Malachi's role as God's messenger, filled with divine revelations and prophecies that were meant to steer the people of Israel on the right path. The book of Malachi, spanning a concise yet impactful four chapters, addresses a myriad of issues concerning the Israelites' relationship with God. It speaks of their lack of reverence for the divine, their corrupt practices, and their failure to adhere to God's commandments. Through these messages, Malachi sought to bring about a spiritual awakening among the Israelites, urging them to realign themselves with God's teachings. While the book of Malachi may not provide a detailed roadmap to the end of times as some other prophetic books do, it is not devoid of prophecies that have been interpreted as referring to the end times. These prophecies, filled with themes of judgment, purification, and the coming of a divine messenger, serve as a spiritual guide for those seeking understanding of the end times. Now let us delve into the prophecies of Malachi, starting from the beginning of his book. Malachi's first prophecy found in Malachi 3, 1, 6, speaks of the coming of a messenger. This messenger, a herald of divine tidings, is a central figure in Malachi's prophetic narrative. The prophecy reveals a figure who will prepare the way for the Lord, a path paver for divine intervention. So who is this way preparer, this harbinger of the divine? The answer, as often interpreted, lies in the figure of John the Baptist. As you delve into the New Testament, you'll find that John the Baptist is seen as the fulfillment of Malachi's prophecy. He is the one who, through his teachings and baptisms, prepared the people for the arrival of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. This connection between Malachi's prophecy and John the Baptist isn't just a matter of interpretation. It's actually explicitly referenced in the New Testament. Both the Gospel of Matthew in chapter 11, verse 10, and the Gospel of Mark in chapter 1, verse 2 make mention of this. They cite the prophecy of the messenger, the one who will prepare the way and associate it directly with John the Baptist. This prophecy, this promise of a messenger, is not just about the arrival of an individual. It's about setting the stage for something greater. It's about preparing the way for the Lord, for the Savior. And this isn't a standalone theme. It's a recurring motif in Malachi's prophecies. The promise of a Savior, of divine intervention, is a thread that runs throughout the narrative. So, as we explore further the prophecies of Malachi, Keep this theme in mind, the coming of a messenger, the preparation for the arrival of the Lord is a crucial piece of the puzzle. It sets the stage for the unfolding of divine plans, for the fulfillment of God's promises to his people. This prophecy sets the stage for the arrival of a savior, a theme that is recurrent in Malachi's prophecies. Uh, next, we find in Malachi 3.16.18, a prophecy about a book of remembrance. In these verses, Malachi speaks of a unique book, not just any book, but a divine ledger that records the names of those who fear and esteem the Lord. This isn't like your everyday journal or diary, but a heavenly record, an eternal testament of reverence and respect for the Almighty. Imagine for a moment a book where every act of piety, every moment of spiritual awe, every whisper of prayer is noted down. A book that marks out those who, amidst the clamor of everyday life, pause to honor the divine. 
Malachi in his prophecy doesn't just speak of this book though, he goes on to suggest that this book of remembrance serves a greater purpose. It implies an impending divine judgment, a time when the righteous and the wicked will be separated, each receiving their due. This idea is not unique to Malachi, but is a recurring theme in biblical prophecy. The notion of a final judgment, a time when the actions of each individual are weighed and measured, is often associated with the end times. In this context, the Book of Remembrance becomes more than just a record. It transforms into a testament of faith, a register of those who have chosen to walk the path of righteousness. It serves as a beacon guiding the righteous towards their reward, while also acting as a warning for the wicked, a reminder of the consequences of their actions. Malachi's prophecy of the Book of Remembrance thus introduces us to the idea of divine judgment. This concept, filled with both hope and caution, is critical to understanding his final prophecy. It sets the stage for the ultimate reckoning, the Day of Judgment, a theme that we will explore in the next chapter of Malachi's prophecies. Malachi thus introduces the idea of divine judgment, a concept that is critical to understanding his final prophecy. Lastly, in Malachi 4, 1, 6, we encounter a prophecy about a Day of Judgment. This prophecy, perhaps the most vivid of Malachi's messages, speaks of a day that will burn like an oven. It's a dramatic image, isn't it? A day so fiery, so intense, that it consumes all arrogance and every evildoer will be stubble. Malachi paints a picture of a time when the distinction between the righteous and the wicked will be crystal clear. The wicked, he says, will be reduced to ashes under the soles of the feet of the righteous. This vivid depiction encapsulates the essence of divine judgment, a time of reckoning where deeds are evaluated and consequences are meted out accordingly. But it's not all fire and brimstone. For those who revere God's name, Malachi offers a message of hope. The Son of Righteousness will arise with healing in its wings, and they will go out leaping like calves from the stall. It's a promise of joy, of liberation, and of healing, a new day dawning after the intense heat of the oven. And there's more. Malachi's prophecy doesn't stop at the Day of Judgment. It also mentions the coming of the prophet Elijah before this great and dreadful day of the Lord. This prophecy, according to Christian theology, is often seen as a precursor to the second coming of Christ. In fact, in the New Testament, Jesus himself identifies John the Baptist as the Elijah who was to come. So what we have in Malachi 4, 1, 6 is a prophecy that weaves together judgment and hope, destruction and healing, endings and new beginnings. It serves as a reminder that judgment in the biblical sense is not just about punishment, it's also about setting things right, about healing and about the promise of a new day. With that, we conclude our exploration of Malachi's prophecies, all of which carry a profound significance, not just for the times they were written in, but for our understanding of the end times as well. Now let's pull together all that we've discussed about Malachi and his prophecies. Through his divine mission in the 5th century BCE, Malachi, meaning my messenger, served as a conduit for God's messages to the people of Israel. His prophecies, encapsulated in the last book of the Old Testament, touch upon the Israelites' relationship with God, their lack of reverence and failure to abide by divine mandates. Foremost among his prophecies is the coming of a messenger, believed to be John the Baptist, who would pave the way for Jesus Christ. This prophecy is echoed in the Gospels of Matthew and Mark. Malachi also prophesied about a book of remembrance, recording those who revere God, suggesting divine judgment and a distinction between the righteous and the wicked. Lastly, he spoke of the Day of Judgment, a time when the righteous and wicked would meet their respective fates. This day would be heralded by the return of the prophet Elijah, another prophecy that is referenced in the New Testament. Remember, while Malachi's prophecies do not provide a detailed timeline for the end times, they offer a glimpse into the themes of judgment, purification, and the coming of a messenger that are often associated with eschatological beliefs.